So we talked yesterday about the difference between acute infections and persistent infections. Now remember, persistent infections are those that the virus never ever actually leaves the body. Your body never actually gets rid of it. There are three major categories, and they can be distinguished from one another, whether the virus can be detected in the body during a long period of persistence. Sometimes they don't actually cause a disease in someone either. That's known as a carrier. So a carrier is someone who's infected with a pathogen but doesn't show any symptoms or signs of infection. Can you think of any infections that might be via a carrier? Hmm, think about that. The first category that we're going to look at is called a latent infection. Now a latent infection is an acute infection followed by a symptomless period and then reactivation of the virus um, occurs and then you get another disease. So a prime example of this, and I want you to note, you're going to need to know these examples, okay, an example for each of these types of infections on your test. So make sure that you pay attention to these. Now, <coughs> excuse me, chicken pox is an example of what the acute infection would actually be, okay, so the acute infection that you, you get it, you get the virus, you get sick, you get the chicken pox, and the chicken pox goes away. Your immune system kind of takes care of it, right? So we kind of get increasing numbers of viruses and then decreasing numbers of viruses. Now, there's a little break in our timeline here because you can go for a really, really long period and be non-infectious, okay? Um, and so that non-infectious period, you still technically have the virus, which is why once you've had the chicken pox, you don't ever get the chicken pox again, okay? But there's something that happens that triggers that virus to become active and start going through its replication phase again. And um, I just realized that my uh, virus definitions have been updated. Very nice. I'm safe. Okay, so um, once that activation occurs, then you get what's called zoster. Um, and so this is why when we look at the virus that causes chicken pox, its name is varicella zoster. Um, and so the virus causes two different infections, chicken pox and the persistent infection known as zoster. Okay. Now, another example, notice how the graph is different immediately, you can see that, is a chronic infection. This is where a virus is infectious at all times, even if the disease is present or absent. So sometimes people have symptoms of hepatitis B, sometimes they don't, okay? No matter what, they are continually releasing, actively replicating viruses, okay? So hepatitis B is probably the most common. And if, you're, if you don't know, hepatitis B is a bloodborne pathogen, so it's found in the bloodstream. Um, and so anytime in a public place, for example, like school, if somebody starts bleeding in class, we have to be extra careful because you can't look at a person and see actually that they have hepatitis B. So we have to be super careful. Sometimes people don't even know they have hepatitis. Okay. All right. Third type is what's called a slow infection. The slow infection is when the, the infectious agent gradually increases in amount over a long period of time with no apparent symptoms. And this typically leads to what we call a progressive lethal disease, okay? Um, example, genus lentivirus. Lenti means slow. It is a member of the family retroviridae. Retro means backwards. Okay, I want you to think about protein synthesis. In order for a cell to make protein, DNA has to make R or yeah, messenger RNA. The messenger RNA has to go out to the ribosome and direct the production of that protein. Retroviridae viruses actually use RNA. They're an RNA virus. But they go in, they make DNA, insert themselves into the host chromosome. Then the chromosome makes the RNA and then the proteins get made to make more viruses. And this is exactly what happens with HIV infection. So I'm not sure if you know this or not, but 
Um, if somebody has HIV virus, that doesn't mean they have AIDS. So we need to clarify that. Okay, HIV infection is the acute infection that someone gets immediately upon coming in contact with HIV or contracting it. HIV infection, the symptoms are very, very much like getting the flu. So people usually don't even pay attention to it because when you get the flu, what do you do? Do you go to the doctor? Nah, it's just the flu. I'll get over it. And about a week later, you do. So you can see that right here on our timeline, it says days because the HIV infection, the actual productive period in which your body is reacting to the HIV virus replicating is not very long. And then it seems to go away. Well, that's because that DNA is going into the nucleus and it's inserting itself into the into our chromosomes. So then it, there's another break. Where'd my mouse go? There's another break right here. And so that break can really occur at any, it, it, it can be for any period of time. It could be days, it could be months, it could be years. Okay, then for some reason the virus becomes active again and it slowly starts to reproduce. Slowly, 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 again, that progressive lethal disease. So as HIV increases in the body, the T cell count in an individual drops. And so somebody clinically has AIDS, they're defined as having AIDS once their T cell count drops below a certain number. So then this AIDS is the slow infection, okay? Acute infection, slow infection.